Hey guys, it's Adrian over BHA here bringing you another video. Alright, so I was on vacation last week, uh, didn't get anything posted. Uh, so if you've been waiting on a response from a comment, uh, I apologize. I'm getting back to them as soon as I can. Um, anyways, alright, so this is the newest video. We're going to do um, installing uh, App Daemon, specifically HA Dashboard, in a Docker container. So kind of sticking with our Docker theme that we've been doing so far, uh, lots of Docker videos going on here. Again, this one's pretty simple as well. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, it's pretty easy to set up. And of course, the nice thing about it is that it's in a Docker container, which makes it uh, easy to uh, maintain uh, for that matter. Let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. All right, so we're going to start by installing App Daemon in a Docker container. Uh, once that's installed, then we're going to go in and configure App Daemon. Uh, once we have it configured and uh, restarted and everything, we will create a test dashboard, uh, in HA dashboard there. And then, of course, lastly, uh, we'll just kind of show you what that looks like in action. So let's get started. For starters, we're going to install App Daemon uh, in our Docker container here. Uh, it's, of course, kind of a lengthy command, so I'll make sure I have it in the description below. So you can just copy and paste it. Uh, but we're going to do a sudo docker run d. I'm going to give it a name of App Daemon. Um, I want it to be able to restart on failure, so we'll put a dash dash restart and then on dash failure. Uh, the port, of course, we use for uh, App Daemon is 5050. Uh, so I'll do a dash p 5050 colon 5050. Now I need to point it at a config directory, and since I want to be able to maintain it outside of the container, I'm going to point it at a folder on my host machine. Uh, I've kind of stored all of my other configs for my various containers in the same directory, so I'm just going to create another uh, app daemon directory in there for uh, these. So it'll be uh, dash v, and I'm going to put it in users, adrian, app daemon. And then to uh, make sure it points to the config, it's going to just be a colon slash conf. Um, and then uh, for app daemon and docker to work properly, we need one pointed at certs as well. Not really sure why, because I don't know that I'm using any certs for this, but I guess if you were going to set it up uh, with SSL certs or anything, you would need this directory. So we'll do another dash V, and I'm just going to point it at that same folder, uh, users, Adrian, app daemon, and then you'll do a colon slash certs. And then, of course, lastly, you just need to point it at the download for App Daemon. So, a cockburn slash App Daemon colon latest, and it will start the download. And it's not too large, so it should download fairly quickly. We'll kind of fast forward through this just to speed it along. All right, so now that it's done, let's just move over to our portainer and check out our new container, make sure everything looks like it's running okay. Uh, as you can see, there's App Daemon at the top. And it looks like it is running. Let's see if it's got the volumes on here. There are the two volumes, and they're pointed at that App Daemon directory that we created, so we are good to go. All right, now we're ready to configure App Daemon. Now you should have been able to do this in the install for Docker um, all at the same time. I had issues getting it to work properly. It would take some of the commands that I sent and not all of them. So I felt like it was probably easier just to go ahead and install it and then we will edit the config file after we do the install. So let's go ahead and move into that App Daemon directory where we are storing our config. 
And as you can see, there's our app daemon.yaml file. So we're going to edit that. So I'm going to create, I want to have it uh, point my log file and my error files into that same conf directory. So we'll do a slash conf slash app daemon.log. And then for error file, we're going to do a slash conf slash ad error.log. You can call those whatever you want. All right, under threads, I'm going to go ahead and add a location for app directory. So we'll say app underscore dir, and we're going to point that at slash comp slash apps. All right, now under plugins, uh, we need to add in our HA URL and our HA key. Uh, so I'm going to plug it, plug in my HA URL there just via the IP address. If you're using uh, SSL certs and stuff, uh, you want to go ahead and put your uh, FQDN or your uh, fully qualified domain name in there. And of course, HA key is your a, uh, API key. If you're not using an API key in Home Assistant, uh, you can remove that line. You don't have to uh, send it a password. All right, now we need to add a section for HA dashboard. Uh, so of course we need to have it point to the dash URL. Mine's going to be of course on the same IP address. And using the new port 5050 that we set up for that container. And the dash directory, we're just going to point it in the same conf directory slash dashboards. Uh, once we have that in there, we are done editing our config files. We'll go ahead and save that. And let's jump back over to uh, Portainer and restart our uh, app daemon container. So that it'll pick up our changes to our config file. All right, now that we have App Daemon and HA Dashboard back up and running, let's go ahead and create a test dashboard uh, just to kind of show you how everything works. If you've used HA Dashboard before, obviously you can just kind of skip on through this. You don't really need to do it. This is just for anybody that's setting it up for the first time. So we're going to move into that dashboards directory inside our App Daemon folder. And uh, we are going to just create a dashboard called main.dash. We'll give it a title here. We're going to call it main. And then of course we have to give it the widget dimensions. Uh, these will be depending on what size screen you want to display it on. I'm using a Kindle Fire, like a little seven inch Kindle Fires. So these dimensions and margins seem to work pretty good for that. Some of it may just be trial and error, you know, kind of play around with the different dimensions and margins uh, until you get the size that you need. Uh, I'm going to set the columns to 11. And I'm just going to add a couple of widgets in here just to kind of show you how it works. There's a lot you could do with HA Dashboard, and uh, it's really just going to require some time to go in and play with it and check out all the different widgets and customizations that you can do. Um, for our clock, we're just going to put widget underscore type and then colon clock. All right, I'm going to add in a switch here and I'm just going to point it at my office lights. Uh, so, of course, widget underscore type will be switch. Entity will be switch dot office underscore lights. Now, that is the entity name inside Home Assistant. state underscore text I'm just going to set to one and then lastly I'm just going to add in a reload widget basically all the reload widget does is it just will reload this uh, page for us or this dashboard so if I was to make any changes uh, to the dashboard while it's up and running I could then uh, after I made the changes I could go hit that reload button and it would recycle and pick up the changes that were made 
So I have all those built out here. At the bottom is where we're going to set up the layout. I've just got the three widgets. Uh, I'm going to set up the clock widget first and I'm going to make it a four by two. And the switch, I'm going to do a two by two. And then down at the very bottom, we're going to add in that reload and we'll just do a one, one by one. And let's go ahead and save that. And now we're ready to move over to the last step. Of course, you can access your dashboard just by going to uh, the IP address of our host machine, which for me is 10.10.10.20, and then the port number colon 5050. Now, this will just take you to the main page where you can select which dashboard you want. So we're going to go ahead and select main. That's the one that we just created. And there it is. Pretty basic. Not a lot to it. Didn't really do any customizations, just kind of showed you what you could do just right out of the box. So we have a widget that's going to show us the date and time. And then, of course, we also have a, a second widget there that has our, my office lights. They're currently off. And see, now I can, if I turn them on, it turns yellow up there. And then here's the reload uh, down in the bottom, which will reload this page for us if we make any changes or it gets stale. That's the end of the video, guys. Again, uh, it's a pretty simple setup. Now we have App Daemon running in Docker alongside all of our other Docker containers. Super easy to maintain all of these, uh, make changes to them, restart them, anything we need to do. Um, not using a lot of resources, only using the resources that they need. So everything is running awesome. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered. In this video, of course, we started out by installing App Daemon in our Docker container. Uh, once that was installed, then we just moved over and we just configured App Daemon. Uh, once that was done, we uh, created a test dashboard that we could use with HA Dashboard. And then lastly, I just kind of showed you what that looked like in action. All right, guys, like I said, that's the end of the video. Uh, please, guys, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. And as always, if there are any videos out there that you'd like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well. And I will see if I can get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.